Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Wesley. Wesley, you prepared something on static code analysis, right? Yes, I did. So think you had a team which does its own thing. It has code, it has some unit tests, it mm -hmm. has whatever. And you want to manage what quality it is, especially code coverage. So you know your, your code is under test and your application is good to go. So today I've got something which is a Sonar Cube, especially Sonar Cloud, which is yep. the cloud version of it. You can host it yourself on the server, but today we're not going to focus on that one. So I've got a view here, uh, which is an application and the code is supplied by Sonar Cube, Sonar Cube itself. Um, and it has some bugs and stuff in there just because we want to see what the uh, analysis does. Yeah, because if it's all green and it's Yeah, all it's, it's nice, it's green. Sunshine but and rainbows, that, that For doesn't now work, we don't right? want that. <laughs> Tomorrow I don't want it, but for now we do. So uh, what you see here, if you've got, you've got some bugs, which are two, you've got code smells, you've got uh, your coverage, and you also have duplications, which is code which does exactly the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and maybe you can deduplicate it. Not always, but could be nice. Yeah, so if you have Visual Studio Enterprise installed, I think it's Enterprise, then you have the check for code clones, right? Yeah. But this is something that you could integrate into your build pipeline? Yeah, you can. So you've got DevOps and uh, you've got your pipeline, so you want to create a pull request and you want this to run immediately. Yeah. Just automatic process and report the result back to you. So that's and, something yeah. it can do. And maybe even stop the build or break the build if there's yep. too, too much issues yep. or, or if your coverage is going too low. Yeah, so what it does is you can configure it in the pipeline. You can say to it, okay, so here's my environment. In the, the environment, there are some rules which are defined and uh, which is run against. Yep. So if you have something like you can't throw a generic exception, uh, it will check it and uh, it will see if there are generic exceptions thrown and it mm -hmm. will create a bug or a code smell or whatever it's configured like. Okay, cool. Um, does it also do um, a check of your coding guidelines? So like parameter names or that kind of stuff? Whatever you want. There is a base set which is supplied by the community and you can, however, put other rules in there. You can yeah. configure what's there, uh, whatever you like as a team. Okay. And that would include like uh, you need to do an underscore for private fields, yep. maybe. Uh, you need to start with an, a lower case for parameters, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So it really uh, pushes those rules to the team and makes sure everyone complies to them. Nice. So which is really cool. The nice thing, but I won't show it today, you can also configure it directly in Visual Studio. So you have the feedback really early in the process. Okay. So that's There's an extension for that. Does it also... Uh, take into account whatever you have in, for instance, an editor config file, or it doesn't? Yeah, yeah, they could work both together. Cool. The, the editor config does something for you regarding automatically putting it in the correct style. Uh, Sonar Cube only gives the uh, the message error yep, warning. But as long as it does that, then yep. at least you have that check, right? Yep. Well, nice. You do. Nice. Um, so this is the example. It has two bugs. So if I click that open, you've got the box right here. Uh, which is an, an unexpected unknown type selector app. So if I can open it, it's something to do with CSS. So it's not only C Sharp, mm -hmm. um, but we'll see C Sharp later on. Uh, there is also in the summary, there is something about code smells, uh, which has to do something with a, a protected constructor or a static to the keyword. Yeah, gen generated file, but that's fine. Um, yeah, you need to edit, so that would be good. And of course, you've got uh, code coverage and that kind of stuff. So this is all it will show. It's just complete information about what you want, what you need, and that kind of stuff. Well, if I'm not so mistaken, you even have click through to the source code where it actually happens, right? So you could yeah, click, you can through click through, and, through yeah. just to see where it is. Um, I prepared a, a repository back in DevOps. So I'm going to add a new project, and I want to analyze it. So I've got my own organization. I've got one right here, which is Sonar Cube. I'll set it up. Uh, if you want to use it in a private way, so your project needs to be private, yeah. then you need to pay for it. Yeah, and I think then the first, what is it, 25 or 250,000 lines of code, you have the base charge, and after that, you get some extra charge, yeah. right? Yeah, you do. So there is a simple click through, which is basically, I want to configure my stuff in pipelines, yeah. and you just need to follow the steps. So Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud is already configured and installed. So I'll continue to that. You need to create a service connection. So that's what we're going to do first. 
Yeah, so uh, and for tho those of us watching who don't know, the service connection is actually something that you create that Azure DevOps can use to talk to an external service, yeah. right? You can yeah. use that to deploy to Azure or to somewhere else, but also to connect to yeah. an external cloud. There's actually a really long list of everything which is supported and that you'll see in a second. So I'll go back to this one, project settings, service connections right here. And you see that there already is a Sonar Cloud uh, configured, but that's the other one which I already showed. Yep. So I'm going to add a new service connection. And here you can see there is a really long list of whatever you want to do. So that's really cool. Um, for now, Sonar Cloud, which came from the extension which was installed uh, previous. So next, I need to put some token in there, which I already copied. <laughs> Press verify, and I'm done. Yeah, I Just see a green name. check mark, so yeah, it's, it's we're green, probably done, so right? that's, that's fine. So ship that's it. gonna be, uh, <laughs> ship it right away. <laughs> so that's gonna be Sonar Cloud, Better Talks. For now, I'm gonna grant uh, permission to all pipelines. Yeah. So for now, so it's otherwise a bit easier. you need to click the yes, I, okay. Yeah, later on, you, of course, you can go back to the service connection, configure it there, but yeah. for now, I'm a bit lazy. Verify it's a safe. demo, you, you're, you're allowed to be lazy. I'm allowed to be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it. The service connection is configured and it should be good to go. So we're going to press continue and see what the next step will be. Uh, there is something about a option to describe what build you want to run. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be anything, for now .NET of course. And actually all the information you need is right here. Nothing else. If you follow the steps, you're good to go. Nice. So we're going to do that. It has uh, three steps, which is an analysis configuration. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it tells Sonar Cloud if you run a whatever kind of operation, then you need to use this configuration. So yeah. it knows where to go. So that will probably be the service connection we configured earlier. Mm -hmm. Then we run the code analysis and uh, that will be done after uh, everything like building, testing, that kind of things are done. Do you explicitly tell Sonar Cloud to start uh, checking? Yeah, okay. so you do that after all the operations. Mm -hmm. So you configured your build, you, you configured your tests, make sure your tests publish results yeah. or else it won't really do anything with it. And when you run the code analysis, it will check all those things. Cool. And in the end, publish quality gate result, which is really handy just for the pull request. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back. Uh, first I need the project key field, but I'll probably go back to here when I need something else. So here I have my pipeline, which is a build and a test. Yep. Nothing else for now. I'm going to add a new task to it, and it should be Sonar Cloud. So that's going to be the prepare analysis configuration, service connection to better talks, the organization is mine, the project key would be this one, and I think it already came up with a project name. That's correct. And we're going to put it in here. There is an option here for integration into MS Build, Maven or Gradle or Standalone Scanner. So the cool thing is just press the MS Build mm -hmm. and everything is done magically. Yeah, and that also works for .NET, .NET Build? Okay. Everything. So it's MS Build for the framework stuff and also .NET for the newer .NET Core, .NET yeah. 5.6 and that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. We edit. And now the cool thing is going to happen. The next tasks are really simple. So I'm going to add Sonar Cloud. First, the code analysis, which is, it's a task, N nothing else. <laughs> nothing too fancy. <laughs> nothing too fancy because it already knows where to go. And the next one will be the publish quality gate. Only timeout. And we're going to add it. Nice. That's it. So it doesn't clutter your build pipelines either because nope. it's relatively it's small relatively in simple. setting up and, and getting to run. Yeah, it is. Nice. So, commit message, a bit lazy again, but for now we'll save it. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it doesn't want to use the main branch. I added some Very good. policies just because not too lazy, but okay. <laughs> extra pipelines. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to create a pull request, and which is a really handy thing because if you run the, the check, it comes up with a bug, it comes up with a code smell. But you don't want to navigate back to Sonar Cloud. You want mm -hmm. to see it actually in your pull request. That would be best that or would nicest. Be, that nicest. would be the yeah. most nicest there is. Um, it does that. 
it has a feature which is called pull request decoration which actually reports everything which was uh, found in the scan and mm -hmm. report it back to the pull request and it will okay. create in the name of whoever configured the environment uh, and it will just put a comment on there. Okay, well I'm curious to see how that works. So it's gonna run. We see the SonarQ pipeline is now running just because it's from the policies. Yep. And it will go through every step, step by step. So it's prepared, it configured, it builds, it tests and uh, with the analysis it will just go ahead and push the analysis to the server, it will mm -hmm. check whatever and when you really do the publish quality gate then it will actually report the stuff. Okay. So after that part you'll see the comments popping up. So we're gonna let it be for now and in the end you'll see something like comments uh, popping up on here. Though, what it does, it actually only uh, checks the newer stuff. So you don't want your old application to <laughs> be completely scanned. No, because that, w that way the first person to do a pull request is going to be responsible for yeah, fixing everything. Yeah, that's <laughs> so it's not going to pop here because we don't have any changes here. So I'm going to add one right away. I'm going to go back and yes, again, a bit lazy, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to edit the file right here. And I'm just going to break my code. Oh no. So I'm going to put the exception right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it on that branch. Commit it. Which will re-trigger the pull request since something changed. So the build it will, will start running again. And it should give a message after a period on there. So that would take like four minutes, whatever your uh, time yeah. is of building and testing. Okay. And it, it's, it's really cool. You just need to make sure it's there and then your team needs to comply to it because it's not a question. It's no. just a hard response it's of a given. no, yeah. you can't. Yeah. Uh, then while we wait for the build to, mm -hmm. to complete, um, what could you show us on the Sonar Cloud part? So for instance, where do you configure rules or that kind of stuff? Yeah. So let's go back to Sonar Cloud. I've got my project. And the project has something configured in it, inside of it. So we have the administration right here. And you have stuff uh, regarding some general settings, but also quality profiles, mm -hmm. quality gates, and that kind of stuff. So first we'll go to quality profiles. Uh, there is always a default way, which of is course. the Sonar way. Uh, you can implement your own. Uh, quality gate and your own quality profile mm -hmm. uh, but then you need to create a new one you need to create the rules and make sure they are there can you can Easy you start use. from the default you can start from ah, the default it's okay. always there at least that helps yeah that's that's <laughs> really good so if you really encounter something which is not uh, something you like so then you can create an exception on that okay cool uh, you can configure whatever for whatever type of language so there is a lot so C sharp of course for us but also, uh, for example, Angular projects, JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, also stuff like uh, T-SQL. Oh, and TypeScript. Terraform, TypeScript. Nice. Uh, y even YAML. So, a lot. Nice. So your build pipeline could check if the build pipeline is okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could, yeah, it could. <laughs> so let's go back to the organization settings. And here you can see all the quality profiles. And here you can see you can also create new one. And do you specify an explicitly which quality profile you would like to use as soon as you start checking? So when you create a project, it will configure it the Sonar way. Okay. Uh, when you uh, are done with creating the project, you can just select the other profile if it's there. If it's not there, you can do it just like I do. Create a new profile, for now it's test. Of course, it's going to be the language C sharp. Uh, you can do something like a parent, which uses the other rules and you can override them. Yep. For now, I'll just leave it. I'm going to create it. And here you can see all the rules which are there. Bugs, vulnerabilities, code smells, security hotspots, all that kind of things. So let's go to code smells and you can see everything you want or need. And you can activate it, deactivate it, uh, whatever. Nice. And it will be enabled. So, for example, the, the double equals should not be used when equals is overridden, for example. Yeah, I can imagine that one. Yeah. So there, there is 
a lot. There. And then what I heard you say, and I just want to say that once again, for open source projects up to 250k lines of code, mm -hmm. this is free. It's free. So there's actually no Completely reason to free. not use it. Yep. And cool. it, it, it's not, it doesn't cost that much if you really want to do it. Okay. So. Well, for organizations, I think this is a very valuable tool to validate the quality of the code that yep. people are writing for you. Yeah. But also if you do open source development, I think this is something that you could add to make sure that your code always adheres yep. to a certain standard. Yeah, it does. Cool. It's is really the, is, cool. Is the pipeline done already? Yeah, so we're going to go back. It and is. here you see it popping up. So it found a code smell, system, ex system exception, should not be thrown by the user code, which is very clear. It also has links in there. So yeah. you can go ahead and press this one. It will just go to the page where it explains a lot of stuff. You can even, and that's a nice thing, you can learn from the tool. So if you open that one, you can see on the why is this an issue. It will just give you an explanation of why is it an issue. So, so it's, it's also learning on the job. Then we don't have to explain it ourselves anymore, yep. but we can just, just reference point to the tool. <laughs> cool. And that's really cool. Um, it got something like uh, the exception right here, uh, and, and it can check the, the own uh, quality gate. Yeah. Uh, only thing is, you need to configure it. And that's the last part. So we're going to go back to branches. We're going to go to the policies right here and you're gonna go to status checks, which is an external source. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's below here. No, it's not. So we're gonna go back to this one because it should be in there somewhere. Uh, no, we'll leave it for next time. Um, but you need to check the status, uh, which is something like Sonar Cube. Oh, there it is. Sonar Cloud, quality gate. Save and then it. it automatically adds that as a policy to the repo. So next pull request, this will show up. Yeah, it does. I would love to see how that looks, but maybe that's uh, for another video. That's for another video. Thank so you so much for the, the, this demo. It's, it's awesome. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. Thank we'll you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.